G'day Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the next installment of our Emu Wing installation. Last episode we left off with two giant holes in the side of my Land Cruiser. Now if you're considering doing this install yourself, I highly recommend going back to that first episode and watching how I actually pulled that glass out because the instructions that Emu Wing give you on this are super vague. They basically say go see yourself a glazier and get a glazier to pull the windows out. Now you certainly can do this on your own and if you watch that video it'll give you some tips on how you can actually attack it. But in this episode we're going to install our window frames, we're going to install our actual Emu Wing windows and in a subsequent episode I'm actually going to test these EMU wings over thousands of kilometers of dusty and corrugated roads to see whether these things actually leak or not. So thanks for joining me on this journey. Let's get stuck into it and plug up these giant holes that we've got in the side of the car. Okay, our destructions say remove the existing window. Tick. Step two, trim the interior panel, which we've done earlier. Tick. Step three, put that back in place and set the window frame in and make sure that we've got all the clearance we need. So let's do that. So this is the sucker that was affixed to those three black clips that we had to snip the ends off on. So we'll position him back in place. One, two, three. And I can see already that this is sitting proud of the window frame. So I'm going to have to trim that off. Not a lot, looks like maybe only about five mil, but it's definitely going to need to be trimmed. So what you're looking at here is the window frame and one of the hinge brackets. Now I've set the window frame in place and what I can see is these bolts here that hold the hinge are quite long and they're actually interfering with that panel and they don't need to be that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop a couple of bits off the end of those bolts so that it doesn't interfere with that panel and it allows me to clamp this frame down properly. Okay I've got those bolts chopped off now and they fit quite nicely and recessed in there. So the frame looks like it's in a pretty good position now. According to our destructions they're telling us to put a bead of this um, Sikaflex around. So I've got a Nikko pen and marked roughly where I want my bead of Sikaflex to go. I put a bit of tape on these brackets just to hold them away from the back of the frame because that gap's got to slide up in there. So that'll allow the frame to pop up in there reasonably easily. Now I'm ready to run the bead of Sikaflex around the outside. Now a tip that I saw on another install video on 100 series was to put this tape around the perimeter so that when you put your Sikaflex in and you clamp your frame in, if it does squeeze out at all and get onto the bright work here, you can peel these bits of tape off and clean it quite easily. We'll test fit our frame one last time. That's where she's gonna go, right there. Okay, Sikaflex time. It's very, very light, this stuff, compared to a lot of the Sikaflex I've used. All right, that is all in place. I'm gonna move this tape a little bit closer to this edge because I can see a bit of a mess happening here. This black shit looks like it will get everywhere. All right, one window frame. Now we'll try and get this in place in one go. That looks like Pretty buddy good. All right, clamping time. Okay, now it says to tighten these bolts up just a little bit, obviously to apply clamping force up on that top edge. Our clamps are all clamped. Our frame is in. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to back the truck into the shed, I'll close the roller doors, 
and I'll get a torch and I'll shine it around the perimeter and see whether I can see any light coming out through the back side. And if I can't, then I think we can assume that it's clamped in properly. It looks like it is, but we'll just use a torch to confirm that. We've got these holes here in the 200 series as well. Now I've got these little, these little trim clips. I'll put a little bit of that Sikaflex on there and I'll pop them in those holes. This is nasty gooey shit to work with, man. This front corner was the one that I was concerned about the most, but it looks pretty good. No light coming through there. Let's try from the outside in. Nope, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. It's all good. We got a proper seal. Now I've only got enough of these clamps to do one window frame at a time, so I'm gonna have to let this set up for 24 hours. Then I'll go and do the other side. But I'm very happy with how that's looking at the moment. Not too much spillage out over the perimeter, which is fantastic. And no light leaks anywhere, which hopefully means no dust leaks. Well, given where I'm at now, time for a cold beer, I believe. And we'll see you in the morning. Here comes the morning. Good morning. It is actually the afternoon now, and it's 24 hours since we put these clamps on. So it's now time to declamp it. There we have it. One frame affixed. That is on there very solidly. And here is a sneak peek of what we're trying to accomplish. Voila. These wires here are for a light that I'm going to hook up. So this side's now finished. How did we get here? Let's go over to the other side and I'll walk you through it. Now from this point forward the destructions aren't actually too bad. The hinges themselves have been marked Land Cruiser front right hand side and Land Cruiser rear right hand side. So let's check we're on the right side. Yep there's the steering wheel. Got it. Now what our instructions tell us to do is to bolt these hinges up here and leave them proud of the face of this panel by about eight millimeters. Now one thing you will note is the clearance between this panel and the top of this hinge are very, very tight. So what you've actually got to do is you've got to put your bolts in the front first. So you pop them through the hinge here and then you feed it onto the front and then you put your nut on. Then you do that with the other side and then you slide the hinge forward so those bolts slide up underneath the trim and then that'll allow you to access the back ones and put the back ones on. Now these are seven millimeter bolts and nuts, which is a little bit of an odd size as well. We'll just take a little bit of slack out of them before putting our back ones on. Okay, we can slide that forward. Now we can access the back two bolt holes to put the next ones in. You can see how it's a wee bit fiddly getting in there, but you can do it with a bit of persistence. Now we'll put that proud about eight millimeters and we'll tighten two diagonal bolts up, the instructions say. So we'll do back on the one side and front on the other side. And that is just so that you can line up the door at a later stage. Now that hinge is secured with the bolts in the diagonal position. So we'll just rinse and repeat on the back hinge. One thing to note, if you are going to be running any wires for lights on the doors or whatever, that's uh, you want to put those in before you actually put the door in. Those are my leads that go through to the wiring that I run to the back of the car and I'll have an LED light on these emu wing doors once that's fully installed. Now the next step is to actually fit the door itself. Mr. Emu Wing supplies these little pan head bolts. Now you'll note on the back of these pan head bolts they've actually got an allen key recess. So when you're tightening these things, if you're tightening this bolt and that is spinning on the front of the panel, you can put an allen key in there and lock it. Well, that's it. So this next step is a wee bit fiddly, 
you basically try and get the door as central as possible in the frame and then tighten up these pan head bolts. Probably gonna have to do it a few times to get it sitting in there just perfect, but that's what's gotta be done. There are 10 mil on the back side. All right, my gap's a little tight there and a little wide there. So I'll close that up marginally. All right, those bolts are tightened up. Now what I did to check my edges was I had a look at that gap along the top here and that looks pretty equidistant, so that's all right. Then I closed my door and had a look at that gap there. It's a little tighter on the top than here on the bottom. So what I will do is I will drop that window down marginally to close that gap up. Now I've got my window perfectly placed. That gap there is nice and even. So that's all good. And there's no touching or hitting of the body around the perimeter. And the hinges are now all tightened and secured in place. So the next step Mr. Emu Wing says is fit up your gas struts. Now there's a right and a wrong way with these little puppies, but you can't screw them up because it says up when closed. So as long as you can read, you're in good shape. And that's it, gas struts fitted. Now the next step from Mr. Emu Wing is to fit the seal, which runs along here and it sits basically in the center of this seal. This is what it looks like. It's basically like a little half moon channel that glues here and when it's affixed and your windows closed that's where it sits dead center of that foam channel there now the way to do that is you close your window you get a chalk mark and you mark the perimeter or the opening on this side and then obviously fix to the inside of your chalk mark so you get something like that so what i'm going to use is a little bit of this soapstone to mark the back of that window So that's what the mark looks like on our door with the soapstone once we've marked it out. Now I'm going to start my seal here at the bottom of the window and that's mainly for water ingress. If it's up here at the top of the window and you get a heavy rain there's obviously a seam there and you could get a leak. Now I'll just cut that a wee bit longer and squish it up in there. So we'll close our window, put our cam locks over, and push the window and see whether we've got any compressibility. Now I do. So what that means is I'll take these cams off and I'll bend them in a little bit tighter, closer to the window, so that it squeezes it closed. And that's just a 10 mil bolt holding those on. So I've just popped that in a vise and straightened it out a little bit so that it'll pull that window tighter to the seals. That's got him. Now the final step that Mr. Emu Wing tells you to do is to get yourself a heat gun and warm up this panel because this seal here, apparently the glue is heat activated. Luckily for me, I live in Queensland and it's always sunny here. So I'll park it out here in the sunshine for an hour or two. Bob's your uncle, she'll be done. So there's one thing that we've yet to determine. Do these little puppies leak? And you know what? I've got no idea. But I can tell you that I'm just about to head off in an Outback New South Wales for a 3,000 kilometer dirt trip across corrugations, desert roads, dirt, you name it. Who knows, we might even find a little bit of mud out there. And I'll put these suckers to the test I'll record it all and I'll feed that back to you guys. The other thing I'll do in that final installment is there is a list of 10 things that I've learned when I put these emu wings together. These 10 things don't appear in the instructions, but I can tell you it will make it imminently more easy to install these things if you know these 10 tips. So tune in next time, you'll be able to see whether these things have actually leaked or not, and you'll be able to get those 10 tips to make your job so much more easy. In the meantime, thanks for following along everybody. Keep the shiny side up. We'll see you out there on the trails. Bye now.